my name is Krista. Um, this is my van. His name is Lloyd um, because he is a crotchety, grumpy old man. Dodge Ram. I bought it off of a friend and converted it over a few months um, and have been living in it for the past year. bedroom all in one small space so kind of had to get a little bit creative with some things so under here I've got uh, clean water that I fill up actually not that regularly which is really nice um, and gray water um, I just try and park in places that I can have quick access to dumping out like if it's pasta water or something not gross so that everything doesn't go in here um, and then I've got my full battery set up back there as well um, one of my biggest concerns was the fact that a battery was right under a sink um, so I built a wooden box with the hopes of protecting it. Nothing's leaked yet so <laughs> I'll take that as a good sign. Um, but the battery runs off of the alternator of the van so it charges as I drive and I can always check. Um, so my inverter is just right there um, and I can plug everything in there. But it actually has been lasting pretty well so I haven't really felt the need to hook up a solar just yet. And then my really ghetto ice cooler. Um, but most of my refrigerated stuff actually chills out in the front seat. <laughs> and I just took a stainless steel salad bowl, drilled a hole in the bottom, um, and it's got a drain in there, and it's a little pump faucet as well, so you can fill up and clean dishes in there. Um, for cooking, I've got this guy. Uh, just like cheap old Coleman stove. Um, works really well, actually. Uh, and then a canister of propane that I'll just hook in every time I want to eat. All of the stuff I need to cook is conveniently in this little guy. And then all of my food generally hangs out in this guy. Um, maple syrup and Annie's stables. This is actually the original wood paneling on the van. It's not the greatest use of space, but I think it looks so cool, so I've never been able to gut it completely. Um, anything outdoor oriented hangs out in these two bins. Um, I actually need to get rid of a bunch of stuff. I found that a lot of my friends, uh, we try and reduce like shopping and clothing waste to begin with. Um, and we're really good at doing like clothing swaps. So if I ever feel like I need something or I need to get rid of something, um, I rarely have ever had to buy anything, which is nice. Structural stability, three out of 10. Usefulness, 11 out of 10. Um, just like socks, scarves. Um, Underwears and toiletries and all the stuff I want easy access to. Under the bed storage, this is just all like outdoor stuff that I don't use as much. All the clothes I own that I wear on a daily basis are in this tote. I do work in an office job, uh, so I do have to look semi-presentable on most days. This year we had a bunch of cold snaps, um, so this guy got put in extremely quickly. Um, the Cubic Mini is a lifesaver. <laughs> uh, I burn pretty small pieces um, can't like everything's under here nothing is too large but it burns really nicely in there um, and that puts off more than enough heat that I ever need for this little guy um, and that's what all the insulation in the windows is for so that when it does heat up it stays in the bed actually started out yay tall um, and then three or four months ago, I needed more space, so I brought it up. Um, a lot of measuring was involved so that I could get it the perfect height for sitting and not hitting the roof. Um, that was actually just totally lucky. I actually stole this from like another YouTube van life thing, um, which is great. All of my shoes hang out here and under here. And then I do a lot of climbing and ski touring and hiking and all the rest. Um, so space for my gear was really important, and accessibility. Um, you'd be surprised how little you can get away with, or at least I was. Um, pretty much anything I need for camping, hiking, ski touring, safety stuff is all in this guy. Um, and then all of my climbing gear. It actually all happened quite randomly. One day my boss was biking home 
and he biked by one of our friend's garages and this guy was sitting in the parking lot with a for sale sign. So he texted me, I called my buddy the next day and was like, yo, what's the deal with that Dodge? Um, turns out it was his uh, and he was looking to sell it. So he hooked me up with some pretty good pricing. And then after I bought it, I like kind of slowly started converting it. And then about halfway through the conversion, my lease was about to run out. Uh, pushed the gas on that a little bit, finished it up pretty quickly, and then moved into it. So around the same time, I had put in for some time off of work, and that all got approved about the time I moved into the van, so it was perfect. It was a great way to save money on rent. Uh, and then I ended up traveling in it through Canada and the States for three months, which was great. I loved it. Um, and then when I came back, I was broke. <laughs> so I kept living in it, and uh, I don't know. I just kind of really enjoy the freedom and the ability to to get out and do stuff whenever I want and bring my home with me um, and saving 700 bucks a month on rent isn't too bad either so <laughs> um, I'm also like really active in the outdoors um, I work nine to six I am usually doing something in the evenings I'm usually doing something in the morning I didn't live in my apartment to begin with <laughs> um, so for me this is just an easy way to have what I need where I need it there's a lot of challenges I think a lot of ones that I wasn't prepared for either. Biggest thing for me was leaving the van. I had like anxiety attacks the first couple months I lived in it. Uh, I was always scared about where it was parked, who might be around that area, if it was still gonna be there when I came back in the evening. And knowing that somebody could literally just like drive off with everything I owned was kind of a terrifying thought. And then the cold was a big one. Uh, the stove is a really good help to that. Um, now that I have heating, food and cooking is kind of a pain. It's a really small space, so that's a really big challenge as well. Like I kind of always have to be kneeling on my knees and cooking at the same time. And if I ever have anybody else in here as well, it's just like there's no room for movement. So it is quite a small space. It's great for one person. And, and once you get that dialed, it's really easy. Um, but that journey of getting it dialed was was a lot of work and like number one I think for everybody in van life is finding the closest bathrooms and figuring out what to do about that um, but other than that I think it's like it's challenging at the beginning but kind of learn tips and tricks from people um, and once you figure out your sort of like your routine then it, it gets a lot easier. I think the biggest piece of advice would be know why you're doing it and why you want to be living in a van it's not as glamorous as people make it out to be YouTube videos are always easier <laughs> than they actually will be. Um, I watched a YouTube video to put that thing in. I watched a YouTube video to put this thing in. It always looks so much easier and so much nicer than the reality. Um, so I think knowing why you're doing it and what you want out of it is a really big thing. Um, for me, it was the, the trip that I was kind of working towards. So I knew that I was saving money and it was gonna make that trip a lot easier and a lot more fun for me. And then once I kind of got that groove, it's it's not as bad, but I think if you just kind of go into it willy nilly and, and aren't sure what you're doing or why, and it's just gonna be a really shitty time. For me, it was uh, like, I saw a lot of climbers. It's like that dirt bag culture. Um, and a lot of people in that community do it to save money and to, to be able to travel to the different places that they want to be climbing. Um, so I think for that kind of lifestyle, and and that's kind of what I want to get towards, it is um, it is a really nice thing to kind of be able to pick up and move wherever you want to go, know that you don't have um, like an apartment to sell or find or any of that sort of stuff. It definitely makes that a little bit easier and you get to spend more money on gear, <laughs> which is always good. And food for me, I had to spend just a little bit more on this than I ended up making on my old car. Um, so that worked out really well for me and I had some money stashed. And I also had the ability to, um, like I had an apartment for four months while I was building the van. So I was able to space it out and the payments for the things, like the van was, or sorry, the fan was a big one. Um, the stove was more recent, but that was also pretty expensive. The lumber adds up really quickly. Um, the battery is really expensive. <laughs> Um, so those things I was able to kind of, like I did one big thing a month, which was nice, but yeah, definitely if you're just kind of like diving into it all at once, it can be really pricey, um, if you don't have a little bit squared away, but having the nine to five, like office job definitely helped too. Um, pretty much anything that wasn't going towards rent anymore was going towards this. I think that like, and I watched your little documentary thing, and I think there's a lot of downsides to it that a lot of people don't talk about. Um, 
like you're not waking up next to the ocean every day you're not waking up next to like some beautiful gorgeous mountain every day Th those do happen in those moments that are like pretty spectacular and pretty awesome even on my road trip when i had the freedom to park and be wherever i wanted like i parked by venice beach one night because i was just so tired and fed up and i didn't sleep a wink because i wasn't sure if anybody was going to break into my van and you know you end up in kind of shitty spots every once in a while but um i would say don't get scared away by that either <laughs> As long as you know what you're getting into when you do like get that freedom and, and that joy and being able to travel a little bit more lightweight and, and uh, on your own time, it definitely, I think, makes up for all like the big scary stuff that people talk about too. So if you really don't want to be excited at all by an Instagram feed, it's just Krista underscore Ruby. <laughs> um, I didn't post too much about my like doing this at all. Um, I actually about halfway through kidding it out I got hit by a car and was like super concussed so like just dealing with kidding out my van was a huge thing for me um so the journey wasn't well established but I posted about my road trip which was kind of fun um but I don't think I like fall into that hashtag van life culture so if that's what you're looking for don't do it <laughs>